Hey, 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 happy, happy Saturday. Uh, welcome to stream. How's everyone doing? Uh, yeah, welcome to stream. Thank you so much for being here on this Saturday, this this fine Saturday in, in February. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm, I am I certainly am. Uh, busy, busy morning for me. I'm sure it is for you guys too, but uh, I really appreciate you being here. So if it's your first time being here, uh, thank you so much for deciding to take uh, roughly an hour to to join the stream. Uh, the stream is, is pretty, pretty laid back. Uh, we talk about things we're interested in, things about tech, things we're struggling with, or maybe things that we're excited about. And uh, we we just kind of spend that time just just talking about it. I guess that's <laughs> that's kind of how it goes. Uh, so if you have something you want to share, you want to talk about, or you want to you want to um, um, ask me about, absolutely throw it into throw it into uh, chat and let's let's talk about it. Uh, you know, we try to stick to tech. It it, it, it kind of veers off every now and then. Totally fine. But uh, we try to stick to tech. Uh, I and you need to hold me that to that, too, because sometimes I go off in the weeds anyway. But uh, uh, if you're not new here, thank you so much. Thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Uh, um, and yeah, good to see some familiar names already. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so real quick, I, I, I mentioned that, uh, yeah, it's roughly an hour. I know I started a little bit late. I apologize. I feel like my whole day is, is about 10, 15 minutes late. I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, but, uh, but, but I've been super busy. I know you guys are, and it's, it's easy to say, oh, I'm busy, but, uh, yeah, I, I've been really busy. Um, if you didn't notice, I, I launched that video this morning that, that took, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> that video took a long time. I know it doesn't seem like much and it's like a 15 minute video, but when you like, you know, uh, prepare for a video and write the script and get everything working and 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 you you expect it to work a certain way and you even test it ahead of time to make sure it's gonna work a certain way, you just think it's just gonna flow. And and most of the time, I'll be honest, a lot of my videos don't flow. This one didn't flow at all. I think it dried up, <laughs> dried up. It was one of the first ones where I where I honestly considered abandoning it. But I was like, man. Anyways, yeah. So the one about Pi KVM, yeah, I had some problems with the specific switch. It, uh, it, 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 it's, it's kind of long and complicated. I explained it more eloquently in that video, but uh, basically, the Pi KVM is is getting this ID from this switch. It's not supposed to be getting, and so the Pi KVM gets confused. Anyways, um, so anyways, I, I, I was able to get through that. I, I had a backup plan. Always have a backup plan <laughs> with your, with your data and with most of your life. And my backup plan was that easy coup switch, but I, 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 you know, I spent a good five days thinking I can get this to work um, when in reality I couldn't. So anyways, long story short, uh, it's all working out. It's good. I, I love it. And it's, you know, it's no fault of the Pi KVM. It's just that, you know, in general, like this is tricky business. Like KVMs in general are, are tricky. Sometimes these things called EDIDs come from nowhere <laughs> or somewhere. They come from somewhere and it's not to be expected. So. Anyways, uh, yeah, because of all that, I was, yeah, up late and then up early and then getting things out and trying to get caught up. And so that's where I'm at right now. So anyways, enough about that. Then I'll get that out of the way so I don't have to keep talking about that throughout the stream. Unless you guys have questions about them, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer it. So um, uh, I kind of start with weather. I'll go with weather. Uh, weather around here in Minnesota has been pretty good. It's been pretty good we got spoiled like last week and we had some 40 degree days which was pretty awesome um and now we're kind of back in the 20s 30s but getting almost up to 40 but that's that's awesome for february because you know it could be negative 20 here and it wouldn't be uncommon if it were negative 20 today i'd just be like yep it's minnesota but no it's uh it's 40 degrees um so yeah so it's 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 really nice i hope it's nice in your area and uh yeah so yeah Weather. It's pretty good. Pretty good for February. Um, like I mentioned, if you got something you want to say, throw it in chat. I'm going to get to it here in a second, and we're just going to start from the top and, and work our way down. Um, really quick, uh, thank you so much. Uh, there was a hype train on the intro. I think it, are we still in hype train. We we're still in hype train. 15 seconds. Sorry. I'm getting used to the way that Twitch shows this. Um, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. I want to call out those people really quick and get caught up on events uh, so that I'm not behind. Uh, but let's start from right here shortly before we start streaming. No joker. Uh, John Handy, thanks for follow. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Dad Venture Time, uh, thanks for follow. Also, appreciate it. Xavius D, how's it going, man? Resub, tier one, 15 months. Woo-wee, 15 months. Woo-wee. Uh, 
Couldn't couldn't say I was here at 12:20. Yes, it's 12:20, but my resub came up, and now I can't <laughs> type without losing the resub announcement. So, oh, well, I'm just gonna sit here until the strum starts. I, I know what you mean, because like you, you you if you resub, then you have to share your message, and you're just sitting there in chat. Like I'll, I'll wait to share this. So, man, <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Maphne, resub. How's it going, Maphne? Good to see you. All right, tier one, 28 months. Let's go, man. Hello, can't wait for my Pi KVM to come in the mail. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's an it's awesome, awesome little device. Uh, I, I I totally agree. I mean, both the, the, the Tiny Pilot and Pi KVM, they're both great devices. Um, you know, equally awesome, I think. I haven't had as much experience with uh, Tiny Pilot, but, you know, it's the same idea, same concept. Uh, but oh, awesome nonetheless. Like, I feel like I have I have these superpowers now. Like, now I'm at the point where I can wake machines up with network packets. I can image them over the network. And now I can connect to them when they're in the BIOS. I have, like, these three superpowers now that, like, when, you know, in, in my earlier IT and tech support days, it was like, man, this is real enterprise stuff. You know, wake on LAN, imaging, you know, pixie booting, and... Uh, uh, IPMI, uh, and now I have it, so it's it's pretty awesome. It's pretty fun. You know, it's a little different, uh, modern way of doing it, uh, but not as enterprisey, but uh, still fun nonetheless. I I, I love it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, before I go off on some tangent, um, let's see who else was here. Uh, Arnov, thanks for the follow. Ar Arno. Arnho TV, thanks for the follow. Uh, Rico, Rico WSK, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Quantum Penguin, resub, tier one, 25 months. Dang, two years. Let's go. <laughs> jeez, jeez. Thank you so much. Uh, Maphne, also, too. I, uh, that was, what, two years? Two years, four months. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Lord Garden Gnome, resub, prime, six months. Much excite. Yeah, much excite. <laughs> All right. I guess I had to, I was all ready for that much excite. Yeah, thank you so much, Lord Garden Gnome. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Six months. Let's go. Um, man, so so um, like I said, if you have something you want to share, throw it in chat and we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna scroll to the top of chat and I know that I know that um that uh Xavius D said he was the first one here at 1220. But the first chat that I see, because I think it only goes back an hour, so is Yakto. So yeah, man, thank you guys for being here. Let's see. Let's see if I can scroll up that high. I can't in the other chat, but Man, thank you guys for being here. How's it going, Yakto? Yakto, how's it going? A lot of hellos. Uh, very thun. <laughs> let's see. Lots, lots of, lots of chit chat. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's see. Let's start here. Kai, uh, great timing. Uh, was just working on my home setup again. Finally, <laughs> I feel like I always am. I, 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 I don't know. I always kind of am because it's like it's like my thing. Uh, it's my hobby, and, and my I feel like my part time job at the same time too. So yeah, I, me too. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Odiv, uh, whoop, set up, uh, set up automation in Home Assistant to turn on heated blankets on the propane tanks when it's below negative 33 Celsius. Uh, can't wait to have propane gelling. Oh my gosh, negative 33? I think that's crazy cold because I think at some point around there, negative 33, 40-ish. Hey, hey, hey. Retired Night Owl, how's it going? Thank you so much. Uh, resub, tier one, seven months. Good afternoon, now. How's it going, Retired Night Owl? Good to see your name. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, lights are flashing too. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, so so Odiv, I, I think around negative 33 Celsius or maybe negative 40, that's where, that's where like Fahrenheit and Celsius like meet, <laughs> I think. When it's that cold, it's it's right around there. So man, that is that is brutally cold. <laughs> and it's like, you know, that makes Minnesota look pretty warm. Man. Uh well, uh awesome you got it wired up in home assistant. Uh pretty awesome. And cool you got it automated uh to kick on uh when it gets that cold. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh let's see, Xavius D. Uh I have to build my workbench uh to my office uh here, but I'm tired. Wait, workbench for my office here, but I'm <laughs> I'm too tired. I hear you, man. I'm I'm tired too. I'm tired. I'm I'm not usually a, a tired person. I I don't get tired. I, I'm 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 the opposite. Like I, I can't fall asleep at night. Uh, but between last night getting going to bed late and getting up early, I'm tired today. I even told my wife I was just like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> She's like, take a nap. I'm like, ah, yeah, not my thing. <laughs> not my thing. I never I never take naps because uh, one I I. You know, sometimes it's like I, I can't help it. I fell asleep. Uh, rarely, maybe once a year, randomly, I'll take a nap, but I'll wake up and I'm like, where am I? What day is it? 
and uh, what time is work? Like, <laughs> I've been that way my whole life, and I so I so I I never nap. I never ever ever nap. Like for some reason, I just I just don't because usually I oversleep, and then when I do wake up, I'm just I'm so like I don't even understand what's going on. It's kind of like when you travel sometimes and you sleep in a hotel, and sometimes you wake up and you're like. What bed am I in? Where am I? <laughs> that's how I feel every time I nap. So uh, I don't. And not that I, that's not the only reason. I just, I'm just never that tired. Except for today. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Liffin, uh, Life Am. Uh, for some reason, designing a rack mount case for a Raspberry Pi CM4 base open WRT setup. Awesome. That is awesome. So you're building a, a CM4 based open WRT and you're designing a rack mount case for Raspberry Pi. Awesome. Yeah, there's, uh, that's tough. So I, I assume it's going to be one U if it's a rack mount case uh, and you're going to take up the whole U. There's a lot of space in there to work with there, but that's pretty awesome. I thought about doing that open WRT2. Um, uh, I thought about doing that also with the with the pie because uh, it, it sounds awesome. Sounds like a fun project. I know Network Chuck did it. Uh, did he do it? Yeah, he did it a while ago too. Um, sounds cool for sure. Sounds awesome. Uh, the only the only thing I hear about though is 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 the AES AES because it you know the uh, uh, Pi doesn't have that instruction set on there, but I'm sure you'll be fine. But I always hear that like people say, well like well you can't do AES on the Pi because then it will be software based. But I'm sure it's fine. But let me know because these are things I don't know. I just I, I've just heard. Uh, Yakto uh, creating some A10 backed instances for some stress testing gaming this weekend. Uh, looking to get eight VMs running at once. Awesome, man. Uh, whoa. Uh, what game are you guys playing for some stress you stress testing for gaming this weekend? Uh, eight VMs running at once. Awesome. Eight VMs on one card. <laughs> eight VMs on one card. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I, I saw you donated one of those to Craft too for his last uh, uh, AI uh, uh, video on um, basically AI art stuff. Uh, stable diffusion? Yeah, stable diffusion. Xavier's D is going to club me over the head with stable diffusion if I don't get that right. Uh, but yeah, awesome. That is awesome. Uh, curious what games and uh, what the VM specs are. You should post in Discord or even in here because uh, I'd love to see. I'd love to see that running. Cyber Knight, hey, how's it going? Trying to set up Mesh Central uh, or and or uh, Teleport in K3S. Awesome. So I, I'm a little bit familiar with Mesh Central. Funny you mentioned that because that's what I looked in originally. I was I was gonna send stand up Mesh Central, and the reason why I was gonna use Mesh me, that's so hard for me to say. The reason why I was gonna use Mesh Central uh, was because uh, I, I I I had Intel Nux, and I heard that Mesh Central works really good with AMT, which AMT is this technology with Intel's a certain chipset and a certain you know pay a certain amount of money for these better intels and and you get remote access and i thought this is perfect this is perfect i don't need i don't need you know at the time this was before i even thought of pi kvm i was like i don't need you know ipmi i got this amt and i i started to implement mesh central and realized i didn't have the intel next with amt and i'm like well, <laughs> you you would have thought i would have tested that <laughs> ahead of time <laughs> anyways like i think mesh central is is pretty awesome so it's a uh, remote management for uh, uh, a lot of different machines all different types of machines uh, but also if you have intel with amt it can remote control those through there too and i thought mesh central is going to be it that's how i'm going to remote control all my nux you know and 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 and, and configure them when they're off but i don't have amt Anyways, uh, I hope you get it set up, and I, I hope you like it. I, I read a lot about that open source project. I think uh, the two of the two of the maintainers I think used to work for Intel, uh, but they might be laid off now. I don't I don't know. There was something on the on the repo where I was like, oh, that's that's kind of sad. Anyways, long story short, looks like a looks like a cool thing to play with. I almost started playing with it until I found out I didn't have the right Intel products. Uh, but Teleport also also awesome K3s. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Sounds sounds like he wants some secure remote access. So awesome. So you're gonna get you're gonna get secure remote access going in, and then you're gonna get remote access going out to all your clients. Sounds fun. Sounds like a sounds like a good day there in the Cyber Night home. <laughs> uh, lesser team, lesser terrain. Uh, got my first switch set up last week. Awesome. Old Cisco 3750, the catalyst. Learning about VLANs, but kind of confused on whether VLAN should be on the switch or on the router. Any suggestions? I mean, it depends. It, it, de it depends. Like, I, I went through the same thing uh, last week. 
when I was redoing my my uh, my some of my VLANs and, and my 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 UDM and my switch, I can I uh, what I and so this is particular to to to, to unify. Uh, but I have the option to move VLAN, so layer three stuff. I think that's layer three, to um, to my switch and offload that to my switch, uh, which I thought great because my UDM, you know, it's it's doing a lot of everything. Like it's you know, it's doing my deep packet inspection, all my rules. It's 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 doing my home security cameras. It's doing a lot of stuff. And I thought, sweet, if I can offload this to my switch, like yeah, that's a win-win. Well, what I ended up figuring out was like some of the security policies that you have that you can apply to those VLANs that are on that switch. I don't know the full details, but the more I read about it, I was like, well, if I can't apply some of my firewall rules to there, like what's the point for me? So you might not be in the same situation. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who know, you know, networking. I, I'm absolutely sure there are a lot of people who know networking better than I do. Um, but uh, for me, like when I read about it and I had the option to, for me, it was in my head, I thought I was like, sweet, I can offload that processing to something else. Cause switches are more, I think switches are more capable of doing this type of work, uh, possibly. And if that's how Cisco works, that's how Unify UDMs are Their Their switches, their enterprise switches are very capable and very powerful, uh, where the UDM is, is kind of capable, kind of power, powerful, but not like the switch. And so I feel like my switch is being underutilized. But if you can do that and you can offload that and not have to worry about, you know, your firewall rules and they're all work. Yeah, go for it. I, I mean, uh, again, I'm speaking from my experience. I'm sure a lot of people know this a lot better. Uh, but for, at least with my Unify experience, my switch is so powerful and I'm like not taking advantage of, of any of that. And I would love to offload that. So but I can't, I mean, I can't now because I think it's software implementation. So nothing against like, you know, the hardware itself. It's just, I don't think Unify has built that feature yet. Soon, TM, like always. <laughs> before another, before, <laughs> right after they redesigned the whole entire UI for the 18th time. Um, but I hope that, I hope that helps. Um, if, if there's someone in discord or, or if you're not in, yeah, yeah I think you're discord. Um, you should post it in discord and networking channel. I'm sure there'll be lots of people who would, who would love to answer that question, uh, who know much more than I do about networking. But that was my, that was my brief experience with it. Franchise, fr Frenchy, Frenchy. I, I thought this is a franchise. Oh, I gotta, I gotta check this. <laughs> Uh, is this franchise franchise? Uh, oh, anyways, I'll keep going because I don't see the Z in there, but I thought your name was always franchise and maybe it's someone else and that's not why and that's why I don't recognize it. Anyways, uh, setting up Proxmox on a thin client to move all of my core services uh, in order to save power. Yeah, I hear you. Now I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I assume if this was, I think it's franchise, uh, it's, uh, maybe. Uh, anyways. If you have a big server like a Dell R720, which if this was franchise, I think that's what you have. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, it's it's going to use a lot of power. And if you're not using all that compute, yeah, it would be nice to kind of offload that to something more low power that's going to be on 24-7. Yeah, absolutely. It would be cool to fire that up that machine on demand if you needed to do something. Say if you needed to do, do some uh, batch encoding or batch rendering or whatever, it would be awesome to fire up that stuff on demand and... Uh, move those workloads over there automatically yeah for sure for sure i mean basically like horizontal scaling i we, we use it at work we horizontal scale when we when we have enough builds in our pipeline we basically fire up a few more kubernetes nodes and let those builds run on there and then as soon as uh as soon as kubernetes realizes hey it's not as busy as it used to be it'll tear down all those nodes and it's what you want it's what you want but you want to you want a horizontal scale to the bigger one when you exceed some threshold but Anyways, baby steps. First step is to move them to a machine that uses less power. So pretty awesome. Uh, awesome. If, if you automate that, let me know. Cause I would, I would love to know more about that for sure. Uh, three poor shop express. How's it going? Uh, Hey everyone. How's it going? Good to, good to see you. Let's see. Uh, Kai, uh, getting my home lab quiet. Yeah, yet another another good thing to do. Uh, that I think kind of rolls into uh, power as well. But let's see. I, I live in an apartment, and some and the systems are the same. Uh, let me start all over. I feel like I have to take off my glasses. They're kind of they're kind of blurry. Um, just like in my video. I yeah. Anyways, uh, getting getting my home lab quiet. I live in an apartment and the systems are in the same room as I work in. Ooh, that's that's got to be tough. 
Uh, so I got myself a new system to run my core infrastructure. Hey, this, this ties right into what we were just talking about a little bit earlier. So my powerful machines could get turned off uh, when I don't do testing. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's, a, it, it's awesome. I, I, I think it's always good when you can shut down machines that are using a lot of power that you, when you don't need that power. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it, it's, a, it's a win-win. It's because it's going to be less heat, less power, less noise. So those are the three you're going you're gonna to save. Uh, you know, theoretically. Uh, and then when you're on Zoom calls, people won't be like, is there is there a vacuum running in the background? That's what the people would ask me if I took Zoom calls in my server room. They'd be like, where are you right now? Actually, they would probably know. They'd be like, oh, he's in his server room. <laughs> but awesome, I, I hope you get it figured out. Uh, curious what your, what your low power machine is that you're using that uh, you moved uh, some of your services to. And then also what, what you... Um, What's the tipping scale for turning on the more powerful machine? Like when you say testing, is it, hey, I'm going to spin up a cluster of stuff and test some stuff? I'd love to know that too, because I'm always curious about like wh what's the threshold to go with more power besides for more power. <laughs> uh, Glor Garden Home, sweet. Crack Kitty, how's it going? Good to see you. I just came here for the free candy. <laughs> home Lab can wait another day. <laughs> how's it going, man? Good to see you. Good to see, uh, good to see your name. Uh, it sounds weird to say, but uh, I mean it. <laughs> uh, Crack Eddie, uh, want to get in my, in my fan? It says free candy on the side. Oh, Van. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yours does, Xavier Steve. This is, okay, this is getting weird. Oh, there's Van. <laughs> uh, Frenchie, uh, I would probably look at uh, conserving more power. We pay like zero, uh, 24 cents uh, Canadian dollars a kilowatt, I think. Yeah. Anytime you can save it. I mean, e even if it's not money, even if power is cheap, you know, and sometimes you just got to say like, okay, well, I, I don't need to, to use all that power. But it depends. It really depends on what you're running. Uh, let's see. Skooka. Skookali. Skookale. <laughs> Sorry, my eyes are so, so messed up. Uh, I just set up a PFSense uh, so I can use the WAN2 of my UDM Pro to route everything over Proton VPN uh with unify routing huh let me break this down real quick so you just set up pfsense got it uh so you can use the wan2 on your okay udm pro to route everything over proton vpn with unify routing rules i see i see i see what's going on here i'm not familiar with proton vpn but i'm just going to assume it's a vpn for privacy so what you have is you have your isp then you have your pfsense this is probably going backwards i'll start this way because this will look better on the video isp and your router and then you have your pf sense which connects to your router and then the 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 wan goes into your wan 2 of your udm pro so then all your traffic ends up going through the dm i'm sorry the pf sense so that it's all i assume encrypted for privacy uh and your isp has no idea what you're doing except for hitting some vpn node <laughs> that's pretty awesome that that is awesome i i, I wish I wish a lot of routers just had this capability built in. I mean, uh, PF Sense, you're obviously doing it there, but uh, yeah, I wish wish that was more common. Like, you know, because I feel like a lot of people would just just do it. Like, if they had a VPN service, um, you know, outside latency and stuff. But if they weren't that worried about it, they would just they would just do it. I'm sure the VPN companies, I don't know, I don't know if they'd be happy or or, or sad because there'd be a lot of additional traffic. I'm sure they would be kind of happy because it's more data, but then also they would probably scale out, but. Yeah, it sounds awesome. So then your ISP is not all up in your business, like what, you know, knowing everywhere you're going. Not that you're going anywhere bad, but, you know, it's it's none of their business. But it is because it's on their network. So sounds awesome. I, I'd love to hear more of that. I, I And I hope I got it right. <laughs> uh, Kai, uh, but I got myself a list of like 10 different applications to test. Ansible, Maz, Grafana, and all that stuff. Kaiga, Kaiga and more. Awesome. So... Yeah, that's that sounds like more than a weekend for me. <laughs> so yeah, I am figuring out and running Ansible, uh, Mass for sure, Grafana. You could spend a career on <laughs> Grafana and getting that working right just the way you want it. And Taiga, not too familiar with Taiga, but uh, I've heard of it. So pretty awesome. Sounds sounds fun for sure. Uh, man, do you guys know about Taiga? Am I even saying it right? Taiga. Sound like <laughs> it's like it's like Tiger, but I'm I'm just leaving the R off. I kind of like it. Taiga. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, three pork chop express. Uh, not home lab related per se, but I followed a best practice guide on Android Shield TV. 
subreddit and boy did it make a difference uh plex never looked better that is awesome so i assume you have an android you have a is it nvidia shield that runs android tv i think i think and i think that's what it is but awesome i i've seen the devices i i would love to play with one at some point but just never had the option to but pretty cool pretty cool and then uh you followed uh uh best practice guide and getting plex going so i so i assume then it's uh so you have direct stream working so it's not doing any transcoding uh so you're getting the highest quality and you're getting you know the the the, the exact uh uh you know uh, the, the, the native i guess stream without any kind of encoding or, or, or sorry without any transcoding whatsoever pretty awesome pretty awesome pretty awesome i'm all for that uh frenchy uh let's see uh 38 uh great british pounds gbp yeah, that's what i'm going with <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm making this stuff up kilowatts per hour here <laughs> yeah not like this 38 38 cents ish i'm gonna say cents yeah it's uh it's getting up there it's getting up there uh let's see uh xavius uh yocto is not required you install hannah montana hannah montha why hannah montha linux on your vms i have no idea what you're talking about i almost said hannah montana because i had no idea what that even was kai uh question are your servers especially the pv hosts uh using pihole dns or are you using pihole just for the clients um a hundred percent of everything uses pihole in my environment let me grab a drink so every everything i mean my only dns is pihole and i have all of my vlans are able to reach pihole so yeah it's it's absolutely everything my pve uh my servers too everything even even my servers that are in my you know untrusted or or my public vlan use it as well because i i, I want to block things and i want to allow things and i want to create you know uh a records or c names anywhere and so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everything here does. Uh, I have three. I've said this before. I have three instances. Uh, two are load balanced behind Keep Alive D on one VIP, and then the other ones just stand alone. <laughs> and then they all pull their configuration from my main one. So really, I have one that I interact with. The other two, I forget they're even there. <laughs> So, but yeah, I, I do uh, just because of what I mentioned. I, I want to be able to uh, block and unblock domains at will. Uh, I want to be able to create uh, a records or or uh, a you know a records. I don't know how else to say it or host entries, a records really, uh, and then c names, which are references to a records. So I can alias stuff and say, hey, all of these aliases internally point to this one record, uh, so then I can name my services whatever I want. But at the end of the day, they end up going to the same IP. And then my reverse proxy figures it out. But yeah, I, I, I absolutely do. I haven't changed much of, of my DNS infrastructure at all. Like I, I've thought about buying before, didn't really want to go down that path. I've even thought about uh, core DNS that Kubernetes uses in running that, but I, I didn't want to go down that path. So yeah, still there, still there. I don't know. Maybe it'll change in the future. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've been thinking about core DNS, but it's like... Ooh, that's, uh, that's that I, I'm sure it's easier than I, uh, I'm making it out to be, but, uh, I, I got my DNS where I like it and it's, and it's great. So I get DNS plus ad blocking plus everything I want all in one, uh, thing I don't get is, you know, I, I don't get infrastructure's code. So I, I, I can't, you know, create manifests and deploy my infrastructure, deploy my changes, or even, even codify, uh, and source control my changes. It's just like I go into a UI and click stuff. But it's it's rare that I have to change stuff unless I'm unless I'm testing or doing some new tutorial or I just bought some gear. It's rare that I have to change anything in DNS. But but <laughs> I have a lot of DNS entries. You'd you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I mean, it's uh, I, I have quite a bit. Now, oh, the other reason why I, I I was thinking about doing you know infrastructure as code for DNS too is is because of of uh, uh, basically like cleanup like i have so many dns entries that I, I i probably don't even use anymore that i don't even realize that are there because they're out of sight out of mind and, and maybe that's okay maybe it's not it's i mean it it's okay for i guess dns because i can't create two of the same i don't think c names it's not good because i might accidentally create more c names and not realize that i already have one or one similar or whatever but I would love, I would love at some point if it, if it were, if I were able to codify my DNS, like like uh, I think uh, with Bind um, or Core DNS or any DNS system, because then I can just open up VS Code and say, find all, <laughs> you know, find all and delete all these records and then deploy that 
uh, that change and just have DNS update because that that would be awesome because it's a, it's a lot easier for discoverability for me to have I have my systems and code mainly because find all and replace all like my two favorite things you know and copy paste too so you got copy paste you got find all replace all and if I have that for all of my configuration across all of my infrastructure makes changes really easy and it makes cleanup really easy too so anyways yeah yeah good question still pie hole not doing anything different uh still three instances and super complicated <laughs> because i made it that way <laughs> uh let's see layer eight master uh i cannot find a i cannot find meaningful information on how to set up all right i, I might have to take glasses off sorry just for a second <laughs> now i'm gonna squint without glasses does that make any sense i need a new prescription i cannot find uh, meaningful information on how to set up network management uh and and vip uh network and harvester I looked at the documentation from SUSE uh, and watched your video a couple of times, but I don't understand how that works. Oh, I got to dust off my knowledge in Harvester because it's been a while. I still have my test machine there, but I haven't been using it as much as I, I guess I thought I would. Um, but anyways, can't find meaningful information on how to set up management network uh, and a VIP. So I think to set up a, I, I think out of the box, it comes with the management network. I mean, I think that's the original network that you get. Uh, you probably know that maybe you do maybe you don't but i i, I for me for me when i built mine i had two nicks in there one for management and then one is like the back plane for the vms and stuff like that um I, and then there's yaml <laughs> and i'd have to dust off and look at my examples of how to do it in yaml or in the ui um but that's i mean it's similar to you know like proxmox right like i, I mean grain of salt but i mean similar to proxmox you, you can or may or may not have a management um, uh, NIC or port that you use specifically for Proxmox. And then you might have a NIC uh, that's used as your backplane or your control plane, backplane uh, for your network that's virtualized within their environment. And uh, I, I think it's similar for Rancher and that's how I had mine set up. Um, if you have something, if it's just like, hey, how do I yeah, ping me in, in, in Discord later on and I'll see if I can dig up some stuff. If you have a very specific like problem, yeah, ping me that too. Well, let's figure it out. So I, I really have to dust off my uh, my knowledge on that because it's been a while since I've uh, I'm, I know I know it seems maybe not that long ago for you, but when I create stuff every couple of weeks, it's like ooh, this seems like a long time ago. Anyways, long story short, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Uh, ping me in Discord or somewhere, and uh, let's uh, let's figure out how to get uh, your your management network uh, and your VIP working because. Because it's nice to have it. It's it stinks getting stuck on something that you know. Like after that, you get to reap all the benefits, and it, it you know then it becomes a non-starter, and you're like, this thing sucks. I'm never doing it again. So let's figure it out. Uh, waves and bits. Uh, hi. Uh, was just checking your website. Cool idea with GitHub Pages and Jekyll. Thanks. Uh, I should watch the video about Jekyll soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of nice to be able to have GitHub. Be your hosting provider. <laughs> There's a few other ways to do this too, but yeah, absolutely. And then with DNS Magic, you can you can no one would even know it's on GitHub. Uh, I've had to take my infrastructure down for roughly a day when I moved my servers and I rebuilt my UDM Pro and all of that. And uh, I did some DNS Magic one day and I said, hey, my DNS no longer points to my Kubernetes cluster; it points to GitLab, or sorry, GitHub. Uh, and for, you know, about six, seven hours, all of my documentation was getting, you know, fed out of there. No one even knew, uh, not that you even need to know, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. I have a friend that did it with Cloudflare pages too. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome to be able to build static content and then have someone else host it for you. It's like the best of all worlds. Like you don't have to worry. Well, one it's static content. So you don't have to worry about like a server. Uh, uh, server, I guess, getting hacked or whatever. It's all static content. It's it's out there, and anything you throw on there is is public anyway. Especially if it's a website, um, less attack surface. And then on top of that, you have someone else host it, and then you're just like, yeah, you don't even have to worry about it. But pretty cool. And and, and if you do, if you're not a fan of Jekyll, there's Hugo. There's all kinds of static site generators out there. Uh, I just went with Jekyll because uh, that chirpy theme I really like. Uh, and it, for me, what it boiled down to was like, I don't care about the tool, you know, so much that's going to, you know, turn my mark down into mark up. 
I more cared about the themes that I could get, you know, the important stuff. So I went after that route. But yeah, there's there's tons of Hugo Jekyll. You, you, like you can't go wrong. There's there's lots of other static site generators out there too, and uh, they're they're pretty awesome. You can make some good looking stuff uh, just to Markdown for sure. You can even make uh, decks now, uh, presentations. A friend of mine was showing me uh, Marp. Yeah, it's Marp. M A R P. You could basically create like like a PowerPoint presentation, but not PowerPoint. Uh, you know, a slide or a deck uh, in Markdown. <laughs> It knows no bounds now. <laughs> it's starting to feel like YAML. Uh, but yeah, thanks, thanks for thanks for chiming in. Uh, Night Fox, uh, do you have any experience with rancher setup K3S clusters being super unstable? Randomly goes down showing blank uh, when it's been running for a week now. Let me think about this. So any experience with rancher setup K3S clusters being unstable? Um. I don't think so. I don't think so because I have, so I have three clusters, right? I have three clusters. One is K3S that I run Rancher on top of. So that doesn't count because you're talking about Rancher K3S clusters provisioned with Rancher. So that's one. I don't have, I don't, I, I haven't run that scenario because I, yeah, like I said, so I have K3S running uh, bare metal, well, virtualized, but then I run Rancher on top of that. Then I have two downstream clusters one is RKE1 and one is RKE2. So no, actually I don't. <laughs> Cause I wanted to like, you know, uh, spread my knowledge, uh, uh, you know, across all three of these, I guess, environments or versions of Kubernetes. Uh, and so I didn't do the rancher provision K3S because my rancher cluster runs on top of K3S, <laughs> super confusing. So it's, it's the opposite of what you're talking about. So no, I uh, honestly, I haven't. Um, what I've learned from all of this, uh, doing this for a long time now, is that um, one, you got to make sure that you're using a version. Uh, so, so whatever your rancher cluster is running on top of, you also have to make sure that that's supported. Like, you know, they have limitations on which versions of Kubernetes that they're compatible with. So, I mean, very first thing, make sure that ranchers are running on top of a supported version of K3S. And then on top of that, I mean, everything else should be you know, I, I don't want to say easy, but, uh, you know, the way that you upgrade Rancher is, you know, you do a Helm install and Helm upgrade and upgrade it. And then that will trickle down and it will upgrade all the agents everywhere on all the downstream clusters. For me, that that just kind of works. I mean, I, I broke a couple of things that still don't work exactly right, uh, especially for my system upgrade controller. But other than that, no. Uh, the other thing is, I think... Um, depending on how you have it installed. But, you know, that rancher agent, I still think, runs on Docker. Uh, um, so you'll want to make sure that you're supporting a version that they support. Um, other than that, I, I don't know. And when you say unstable, you should, uh, yeah, elaborate. Because, uh, you know, is it, the, is it the cattle agents? Like, what part of it um, isn't working? And then when you when it does happen, like... Like where, where does it happen and what are some of the errors? Cause I think that will help isolate what's, what's going on here. I know that you say it's, it's, it's randomly goes down showing blank. I can't see the blank, uh, but let me know, let me know. Cause it would be, be interesting to know, but I, I, yeah, I'll be honest. Like I, mine's been really stable and I'm not just saying that cause I'm like, yeah, I live it and breathe it, <laughs> but mine's been super stable. Uh, a lot of my stuff when it does go wrong is self-inflicted. <laughs> wounds you know and uh i'm even to the point where i can shut the whole cluster down turn it on in any order and it'll heal itself within five minutes my whole entire infrastructure is back up running and self-healed so it's been running pretty good so you know so yeah I, let me know let me know uh how weston uh hi uh hello recently hosted little link server in my home lab thanks for the image oh yeah no problem no problem at all it's uh it's uh it's a labor of love like i i i have fun building and 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 maintaining that i really do uh for many reasons but yeah i, I love it uh, when i rewrote it to react and i'm a huge fan of react it was it was super fun to, to to be able to rewrite it in react and then containerize it and share it with people and like give people an easy way to spin up this container you know kind of like a link link tree uh that they can spin up uh and make it look good without doing anything other than environment variables i mean it was super fun that that was the challenge like how do i make this web content dynamic within a container. So it was, it was a fun problem to figure out. I'm, I'm still updating it. I don't, I don't know if you update it often, but I, I probably update it once a week, <laughs> once a week. 
Sometimes a couple times a week, you'll see updates for it. There's been a lot of polls on it. But anyways, thank you. Thank you for uh, letting me know how it's tonight. I enjoy it too. I, I mean, that's my homepage. Technotim.live is exactly that. I mean, it's the same container <laughs> as you're using. And I'm glad you like it. Uh, Kai, uh, Yakto, how is it looking? Uh, we used that at my last job. Really looking forward to using it again. Uh, I think this is going back to uh, the virtual, virtual machines. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, Yocto making some modifications to the installation instructions for my needs, but wasn't too bad. Oh man, I'm, I'm totally like, what, what, oh, I'm missing out. Uh, Crack Kitty, uh, don't know who you're directing that. Uh, I'm using Pi-hole for local DNS only. DNS traffic goes through Pi-hole and then heads back through PFSense to Cloudflare, Google's others. Oh yeah, I have six listed, uh, as backup for internals. <laughs> Eternally, yeah, externals. Man, that's a lot of backups. No, it's, uh, it's just, so that's a good point, Crack Kitty. So, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, I, I do then use a different DNS. I don't use my ISPs. I use, I think, Quad9. Uh, is it Quad9 still? I think it's Quad9 still. Okay, that was weird. The music stopped too. And I, uh, Anyways, Quad9, I use Quad9 on top of that. So yeah, so all, I, internal DNS all gets taken care of by Pi-hole, but at the end of the day, then I go through Quad9. I Six backups though. I, I need some backups. <laughs> need some backups on my DNS for sure. I think I only have one or two. I think I think it falls back ultimately to Cloudflare at the end, but I might it might only be one. A uh, Snoopy, if you can't find a Raspberry Pi, check out uh, Big Tree Tech in their Pi Four boards with CB One. Uh, I don't I don't know what CB One is. What I'm I'm I feel like I'm so out of loop. CB One. Uh, well, awesome. I I can't find Raspberry Pis, but I I will check it out. Mafni, uh, mine has a Pi 4 CM4. My Pi has a CM4 included. Yeah, so yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so with uh, Pi KVM V4, it's uh, CM4 that's included, which is pretty cool because then it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So it's it's no longer like going to be a had. It's basically like a, a board that you put the CM4 in, which is which is pretty awesome. I think that's the way that uh, a lot of things are going, and it and it gets rid of some of the complexity of like the. Or in, in the bulk with GPIO pins and all that stuff you have to do. If you just design the board, you know, where you can slap in the CM4, it's a lot lower profile, as you can tell from the the, the Pi KVM V4s, the, the, the mini. Uh, but yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, you're getting a CM4 out of it too. I know Gearling was teasing me earlier today uh, when I posted that video. <laughs> he said something like, he was saying like, oh, this is uh, like the weirdest way to a, uh, what do you say? It was like, hey, uh, Here's a, oh, I got, I got to read it because it was so good. And I was like, man, you should, you should, uh, I should hire you for my marketing department as if, as if I could afford gearling. What did he say? I'm, I'm going to look. He said earlier today, he said, you can, but you can buy a Raspberry Pi with this one weird trick. <laughs> and that's exactly right. It's about the only way you can get a Raspberry Pi right now is if it's uh, already inside something else. So, yeah. Uh, and it might still be cheaper than uh, might still be cheaper than uh, what scalpers are selling them for, for sure. <laughs> you know, if you want a Raspberry Pi, you can pay a scalper. I don't know. Two, th 200 bucks. Who knows what they are? Or you can get a, you know, Pi KVM for 250. <laughs> you know, might be cheaper. Who knows? But yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the, the, the future of CM4 or these boards in general. Um, in general, because, you know, just being able to snap them in all of these different things gives you so many possibilities. And now there's like just this common interface instead of, I guess the old common, it's, it's like turning it upside down rather than you putting a hat, you know, on a, on a pie. And it's more like, no, you putting the pie on the thing, as long as it implements the same interface. So it's pretty cool. I, I, I I'm excited for it. And, uh, this is what the touring pie to, is to is doing. It's what a lot of people are doing. I'm jealous. You're, you, I, I see you already pre-ordered it, and uh, I, I saw that uh, they're shipping uh, next month. So oh. he said, uh, and so Max. Anyways, I, I talked to Max for for a while. He's probably like, dude, this guy needs lots of help. <laughs> Leave me alone. No, he's such a nice guy. Um, he said he's going to send me a prototype. Hopefully, the prototype gets here sometime, and uh, I can I can do some testing ahead of time too. So uh, I'm super excited for it. Uh, Tim, mama, pajama, Tim, mama, <laughs> Tim, mama, pajama. Uh, hey, Tim, looking at building a virtualization server and I'm a little overwhelmed with motherboard choices. Uh, doesn't need, do, don't need something crazy. Could you recommend a super uh, micro board AMD? 
Oh, that one's tough. That one's tough, and, and, and it's not because I'm I, I'm not familiar. Well, it's a little bit of that too, but um, I what I've learned is like when I bought my Super Micro stuff, I I went through the same thing that you're going through, basically saying like I kind of want this, but I'm super overwhelmed, and I think a lot of it has to do is like like they sell through distributors and a lot of the stuff is already pre-assembled. And so you, it's hard to buy boards individually. It's hard to buy boards individually unless you know exactly what you want. Like for me, when I went out to look for a micro, super micro server, I couldn't window shop motherboards like I can with AMD boards or Intel boards or anything, or even Xeon boards. I couldn't window shop and just say like, yeah, I kind of want to, Hey, Retired Night Owl, dude, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, five gifted, oh man. Retired Night Owl gifted five tier one subs. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's see, Lesser lesser Terrain, uh, Kai Tao, uh, Rupee Rage, uh, Maddie, and Hey Fairchild, enjoy your gifted sub from Retired Night Owl. Dude, thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so uh, I, I feel your pain. I know exactly what you mean because I went through the same thing where I was like, hey, I want an Intel board and I'm going to show me all your Intel boards and I'll pick my Xeon. It's so hard to find anything. And I think a lot of it has to do with it. Like they go through distributors and they, you know, have a b bajillion different configurations. What I ended up doing, which ended up being kind of the easy button, but still not easy, was buying a bare bones kit um, because then I knew if I bought the bare bones kit, I knew that the board fit <laughs> inside of the, the case that I wanted. Sounds odd, but you could run into a situation where it won't fit inside the rack mount that you want. Um, and then I knew it had the power supply that it needed. And all I needed to do was supply the CPU and RAM. Maybe that's what you're talking about. So I apologize if that's what you are. Um, but I, I would look for bare bones kits for sure. And it's tough too, because it's like, okay, then who do you go through? It's like a bunch of companies you've really never heard before or things on Amazon that might be super overpriced or you have no idea. I don't know. Long story short is it takes a lot of, at least for me, it took a lot of brain power to buy Super Micro where I feel like everything else I've ever built and purchased didn't take a lot of brain power. It was more fun researching this stuff. And with Super Micro, it, it is tough because I mean, I mean, they, like I said, they go through distributors, though distributors then sell certain configurations and they're not, you know, those distributors do a lot of B2B and so they don't have a good, you know, B2C website and you're just kind of like, oh, I just want to buy your products. Like make buying your products easy. <laughs> uh, I, I wish Supermicro would do direct to consumer. I wish they would. I wish it would do B2C. They, they're probably not going to, I don't know, probably not in market for it, but I think there is. Anyways, uh, yeah, I feel your pain. So um, I don't know. I mean, throw it in the hardware channel and Discord and let's let's find one. Let's find one because it, it's it's hard. And again, that's why I ended up buying. Uh, I ended up buying a, 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 a bare bones one because I, I couldn't do it anymore. I was copying and pasting part numbers everywhere and searching PDFs for part numbers that match this. And I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Give me everything but the CPU and RAM and I'll figure it out. Um, let's see, Robert. Hey, how's it going? Robert, how's it going? I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. If it's Mizen or Mizen or Mizen, but Robert, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Hey, Tim, good to catch you on. Good to see you too. It's probably late over there, isn't it? It's probably late. It's probably late. I've not been on Twitch in a while. Well, good to see you, man. Good to see you. If you don't know Robert and runs a YouTube channel, he's, uh, he's, uh, all over Twitter too. Uh, does some home lab content all around. Good guy. How's it going, Robert? Uh, Ted, Ted, Ger Ted, Tedra, <laughs> Tedra, Her Herajan. I want to say Tedrahedron. Anyways, uh, do you think you'll ever, ever do stuff with the GPT API stuff? Uh, I want to do a GPT project. Um, uh, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm, I, I, I <laughs> how much time you got? No, um, it, it's definitely cool. It's definitely popular right now. Um, I, I, uh, I see how it can help. Uh, I don't know what I would do. I mean, most people are, you know, uh, using it in, in a lot of different ways. Um, but a lot of people are using it to, to kind of, uh, either, either summarize or, or get you know, prototypes of things they want to say or write. <laughs> that's, that's kind of my, 
you know, ChatGPT in a nutshell, you know, it's, and I know it's more than that, but you know, at the same time, it's, 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 it's trying to provide answers, um, in a human fashion, um, or summarizing things in a human fashion, whether those things are true or not, or right or wrong is up to you. <laughs> and so I, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I mean, what's left. I mean, it's a chat client. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you could do with it. Um, and I'm sure there's a, 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 a ton of use cases for it, but you know, it, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a chat client. So it's like, okay, what, what could I write? I mean, you, you know, there's stuff in customer service. There's all this stuff you could do, but I still think, I still think that model needs to be trained quite a bit. As you see from Microsoft backing off and some stuff or changing some stuff, you know? Um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know what I would do. Cause I, I, I couldn't, you know, off the top of my head, think of anything other than either something in customer service or a chat bot, which it already is, but a chat bot that maybe knows a little bit more about uh, some of these, you know, deeper domains that people are in. Um, but it, it's tough. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty solid as it is now. <laughs> but yeah, it's tough. I, so I don't know. I, I couldn't think off the top of my head. You, what do you want to do? What, what, what is your project going to be? How would you use that API? Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Azure, Microsoft. I'm sure they're. I'm sure they'd love to sell it to you too, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but no, it's uh, it's cool new tech. I'm excited to see where it goes. I, I I do think it's it's still very early and it's only going to get better. Uh, a smaller GPTJ. All right, on my CPU. I tried to small. Oh, there you go. All right, all right. Odiv. All right, negative forty. They meet. All right, I was close. I was saying it was somewhere around negative thirty three, negative twenties ish, but I knew it was very cold. So <laughs> you got a few degrees to go, but still, that's pretty cold. So negative forty is where they meet. Where's celsius and and fahrenheit meet so i don't i would say i'll see you there but i i don't want to see negative 40 no way snoopy uh i wonder how long until uh a tim chat gpt video is coming out i you know i i don't know like i'm i'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm, I'm over the hype like okay there's this diagram that says like uh, there's this old diagram these talk about it work a lot it's like there's this there's this peak for technology, right? And first there's this, this peak of uh, inflated expectations. And then there's the trough of disillusionment. And then it kind of goes back up to where people can really use it <laughs> for real things. I think we're at that peak of the height of inflated expectations. And I think I could be wrong, but I think we could drop back down where people say you know what it's uh you know uh, we, we it's not as i mean it's great but we don't know how it fits in yet and then we're going to see it skyrocket off and we're going to see it everywhere and it's going to be used exactly the way it should be so I, I mean that's just that's my take on where we are right now with it um i i've used it i i've used it, it definitely cool like it was great i used it one time to write a warranty claim to samsung one of the few times i ever wrote it i ever used it because i was like I, how do I sound polite but firm in an email asking where my warranty claim is? <laughs> I was like, I know, I use ChatGPT. And it saved me, you know, it was, it was fun to do it. I had to tweak a little things, but it was it was awesome. I was like, this is great. This is, uh, I don't want to put my power into like speaking professionally to this company who should be honoring my warranty claim. And I, should, well, I shouldn't have to follow up and ask where it is or give me some tracking. Anyways, all that aside, it was great. Send it out. Next day, they, they emailed me. They said, it'll be there. <laughs> it'll be there soon. Um, so anyways, I, I, I'm definitely not, uh, not uh, I, definitely impressed. I, I, I still think there's a long way to go. I, I think it's really awesome from summarizing things or, or I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of look at it as like it's, it's, it's prototyping, right? It's, it's rapid prototyping. It's basically, for me, in my mind, and I could be totally wrong, that it's 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 the 3d printer of text right 3d printer of text and what do i mean by that this is kind of in my head it's like okay if i if i and i'm not talking about all the real things you could do with a uh, with a 3d printer but i'm talking about when you want to prototype something like a real thing that's going to become a real product that needs to get machined and you're going to need diagrams for and it's you know going to get mass produced at first, you you know, the 3D printer came around. It was like, this is fantastic. You could prototype something. You could design it right here, print it out, and test it. 
and see how good it is and you know and, and tweak it and come back and get different versions of it do different drafts and test it like in your own lab and then send it off to production to get produced i kind of feel like that's what chat B, chat gpt at least for me has my experience has been it's been hey summarize this thing or i want to say these things or I, I have these ideas put them together and show me a few options and from those few options i'm going to choose one of them and i'm still going to make it better and i'm going to send it off so that's why in my head i feel like i feel like with with chat and text that chat gpt is it's the 3d printer of text and that's not a bad thing that's an awesome thing to have but it ends up me not you know having to put the time and effort into doing something that is kind of mundane maybe it's research maybe it's summarizing but then it's presenting a few things to me for me to then make my own decision and make better and then decide on what i'm gonna send out to someone else or to the real world or or even just keep as truth for myself so anyways i, I don't know it, it, it's super interesting i think it's very early i think we're gonna see a lot more i think it's gonna get very powerful in the future and this is only the beginning but i do feel like a lot of people have a lot of expectation a lot of people have a lot of expectations for it very early on and you know and i think i think like i said we're going to see that trough of disillusionment and then it's going to swing up again and it's going to be everywhere on everything and it's going to be second nature so <laughs> anyways i you know i uh, we talk about this stuff at work sometimes and uh you know i i've thought about it too but I i'm going to stick by it 3d printing of text <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Being able to, you know, rapidly prototype stuff really fast and and you decide on what's best. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you're probably like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, Retired Night Owl, did you watch the Mr. Uh, video? I did not. I did not. I, I don't know what video that is. I don't. But I, I apologize. I'll have to check it out. Uh, Xavius D, uh, hold on. I've earned my gray beard. Uh, I'll nap everywhere. LOL, zero. I was given. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm not critical of people who take naps. <laughs> my wife would say different because I tease her. I'm not critical. Like, I, I get it. Like, I, I get it. Like, it would be awesome if I could turn my brain off for 20 minutes or four hours a day. Like, I would love it. I would love it. But that's just not how my body works. And I understand that's how some people's body works. It's not how my body works. I wish I could. I wish that could be part of my routine where I could. So maybe, maybe, you know, as I get a little bit older, it will. But uh, I don't know. For some reason, I, I just can't. I, 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 It's almost like I have FOMO. Uh, but but FOMO of just being awake and it's or, or being, I don't know. I, it's not like I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to go to sleep because I might miss something. But I just think. I, I don't know. I'm one. I'm never tired, and two, then I'm just kind of like I could be doing something right now. That's the first thing I think about when I lay down. Oh, I could be doing this. <laughs> That's probably not good for me, but it is exactly how I feel. Uh, eight matter. Oh, here we go. Eight. I'm going with eight. Mateo, Mateo, me. Oh, it's it's uh, forwards and backwards. Is that is that onomatopoeia? Wait. Um, is onomatopoeia? No, onomatopoeia is how it sounds. I don't know. It's same forwards and backwards. I forget. Anyways, hello from Italy. Hey, hello from the United States. <laughs> hey, block on, block, bog on networks as Risa Prime eight months. Uh, <laughs> I had a sweet thirty minute nap before tuning in. All right, I know. I know you guys are gonna razz me, and I again, like I have nothing against people who take naps. I have nothing against it except for my wife. I razz her about it. Uh, but I have nothing against it. It's, again, it's just it's just my mind and my body. And I, 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 I like I said, I wish I could because I, I would be able to tune out and I would probably feel a lot better mentally if I could. But for some reason, my brain does not tune out. <laughs> uh, Helen, Hellenic guy. Uh, Argo CD or Flex CD? I like it. I like it. Um, Whatever works for you. Now, it, it, it depends. Um, it depends. I, I use Flux, familiar with Argo. I know that it's out there. I know that Argo is super popular. I, I mean, I would say try them both. Uh, I would try them both. Um, I feel like I feel like uh, as 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 far as the product goes, that I feel like Argo CD is a lot further. It's a lot more approachable. It has a UI, <laughs> you know. So I feel like Argo CD is is definitely more approachable. And if you're new to this space, if you're new to GitOps, you're new to Kubernetes, uh, you're new to CI and CD and continuous deployment and delivery. 
Argo, I think, is going to be your best bet because it's more visual. It's more approachable. Um, you know, that being said, it does take more resources, but take resources off the table. Doesn't matter. Um, as far as like, you know, uh, mind share and market share, I think Argo City is, is a lot bigger than Flux. I, I'm a fan of Flux because, well, one, that's how I learned it. Uh, I, you know, learned most of it from Kate's at home, <laughs> you know, and Devin, like a lot of people. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, I, it, it made sense to me after, well, kind of made sense to me after I started doing it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a big cluster at home. I have three, but you know, when I say three, you know, they're smaller clusters. I don't know. I have a ton of pods. Okay. They're not that small, but <laughs> anyways, I just thought like, Hey, I, I want something lean and mean. And, and, and I knew that there was this community around, uh, flux with Kate's at home. And I thought, well, if I go the Argo CD route first, I don't have like a, this big community. I know there is publicly, but in Discord where I was hanging out, I didn't have this, you know, huge community who might be able to help. And so, you know, maybe, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's being selfish by saying like, hey, if I, if I do this one that other people are doing, you know, I, I might be able to, you know, join a community or, or ask people for help or help other people. So maybe it's not selfish, but at the same time, uh, yeah. And I think a lot of people do that. I guess, I guess a lot of people do that for the community. Anyways, uh, I would say, like I said earlier, if, if you're new to GitOps, if you're new to continuous delivery, especially, especially with infrastructure, um, and, uh, and, and, and you need something a little more visual, I would say absolutely go with Argo CD. Absolutely. Uh, but if you're not new to that and you're okay with lots of YAML and debugging stuff from logs and terminals, <laughs> try Flux. <laughs> I'm, I'm not selling it. I'm not selling it. I really do. I really love Flux. I just love, in general, any tool that allows me to make, you know, create infrastructures code or deploy my stuff or, or, or uh, do things for me automatically where I don't need to spend that time doing that. Um, I, I just love cause I, I, I get time back. I, uh, well, I get time to do other things. It's not like, I'm just like, Oh yeah, that was, remember when that used to take a half hour, I, I'm going to take a half hour nap now. <laughs> no, no. It's like, okay, now I'm going to fill that time with something else, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I love them both. Uh, I have more, uh, much more experience with, uh, flux though. Captain tidbit. Hello, Tim. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Uh, PC Geek, I use Mass Central on K3S. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PC Geek's got it. He can help out. PC Geek, I found a Docker image, uh, and I have it running there. Yeah, I did see it too. That's exactly how I was going to run it as well. I used it for work and at home. Yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. And it, like I said, it supports Intel AMT's, uh, AMT out of the box, which is pretty cool because then you could, you know, basically get, uh, get uh, IPMI on devices that are the Intel V Pro that have AMT, but not a lot of people do. <laughs> I thought I did, mistakenly. <laughs> well, uh, waves and bits. Uh, working on replacing my HP Gen 8 server's NIC card. All right, NIC card. I like it. You got it. You got it because network interface controller card. I always thought the C was card, but it's not. Uh, Lightning Strike took that out. Ooh, that stinks. That stinks. I'm hoping that never ha happens to me. I've heard that can also like be very bad for DAC too. Uh, like uh, I, someone mentioned, I can't remember if it was on Twitter on here, uh, when I was saying I was using DAC instead of fiber and they're like, Oh, but you got to worry about grounding. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they were saying like it, like, you know, you know, with fiber, you don't have to worry about it at all. At least, you know, going through <laughs> cause it's light, but with, you know, copper you do. And I was like, Oh man, if I had a lightning strike and it fried out all of my switches, cause they're all connected by copper, that would really suck. <laughs> Yeah, I would for sure be uh, filing a insurance claim on that. But yeah, awesome. Um, sorry you took it out, but that's awesome that you can get one in there and replace it. Because uh, I've had that happen one time. I had it happen on a modem way back in the day. Uh, and I have had it happen on a network card before. But I've been pretty lucky ever since, since yeah, since then. I mean, I'm talking like 15 years ago was when my network card got fried. Even longer for that modem. Uh, Nubin. New Ben, uh, thanks for follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, Orbital, Orbital Teapot, uh, 418. I love it. Uh, time to retire my GTX 1080 uh, to the server for assisting with handbrake and Plex uh, by using vGPU to unlock my unlock it on my virtual machines. But what GPU is the best value now? Ooh, that that's a tough one. I, I don't know, honestly. I haven't been in the GPU market for a while. 
I also have a 1080 uh, and sitting on the shelf. I have a 1080, I have a 1650, and I have a 1050 uh, sitting on the shelf. And uh, I should have sold them when uh, <laughs> when the time is right. But I I don't know. I kind of wanted to hold on to them. Um, I don't know. That that one's tough. Uh, uh, I, I, when you say it depends on what you're going to use it for. I assume since you're moving that one to your server to do other things, you want one for your main machine and for, I assume, gaming or encoding or whatever you're going to do on your main machine. Honestly, I, 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 I mean... I've had a 3090 now for a couple of years and I haven't even like looked. I'm still like, like, you know, <laughs> feel like paying off that mortgage on my 3090. So I haven't looked in a while. Um, I, I know that AMD has some stuff. I know that Intel has some stuff. How, how, how generic can I talk about, <laughs> can I talk about this? To be honest, I, I don't have a great answer. I, you know, I think the hope was that GPUs would come down considerably you know, after the supply chain stuff got fixed, but I don't think it dipped as much as people thought it was going to be. So I, I don't know how much of a value you get out, out of buying, you know, the previous generation versus the current generation. So I, yeah, I'm not, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, oh yeah. Uh, throw it in, uh, on my go-to throw it in discord. Let's figure it out. Cause I would like to know at some point too. Uh, let's see. Uh, PC Geek VLAN routing is layer three. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, is wait. VLANs, VLANs are layer two, I believe. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Hey, I'm, I, I believe you, whatever you say. I just know that my switch started supporting layer three. Uh, and so because of that, I could offload my VLAN routing to my switch versus on my UDM. So, uh, you know, this better than I. Uh, PC Geek, if you have VLANs that are strictly for segmentation and nothing to do with routing between those, it could be easily handled with just a switch. I prefer to keep them on my firewall router, PFSense for ease of management, and routing between physical switches, access to VLANs over VPN, etc., all in one place. It's nice. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to make it any more complicated than it kind of already is. And so I think you hit the nail on the head. For me, it was just like, okay, if I could offload and click a button and like not think about it, sure. But I, it's not that easy, as you can see, for sure. Uh, all right, Frenchie. All right, I'm not franchise, uh, but I do have 720s. All right, hey, I, I was so close. And it's funny because franchise spells his name with a YZ. And I'm like, wait, did you just drop the Z? Like, what is going on? Turns out you're not franchise but you also have a 720. <laughs> I think I could pretty much refer to anyone in this or talk about anyone's system in this channel and be like, yeah, you got that 720, don't you? And like eight times out of 10, I will be exactly right here. Like, yeah, I do. How'd you remember? It's like, cause, cause everyone, no, or they'd be like, no, I got a 710, but good memory. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's how I feel. Uh, cause so many people have it. So many people had it. I had one. A lot of people have them for sure. Or used to have one. They'd say like, nope, got rid of it, but thanks for remembering. <laughs> no. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I really do remember that uh, franchise has a 720 or a 710, one or the other. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, virtual, virtual Alex. Thank you so much. Uh, Risa Prime, two months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, King, King Nick. Thanks for follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. All right. Uh, let's see. I, I, I'm, I've gone a little bit over my over, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if there's either something. Let's see. Uh, this is. Big one, but I'm going to click it. Uh, Steel IT. Hey, Tim, first of all, let me say I love watching your videos. Thank you. They're very inspiring. I appreciate it. I have a dinosaur uh, home lab with a workstation grade dual Xeon server with a Quadro running Windows Server and Hyper-V. I desperately want to get uh, started on Proxmox, Docker, and more. You have a great video on your channel about self-hosting security and the flow of data from start to finish explaining how and why you do stuff on the network side. Hey, yeah, yeah. Do you ever... Do you ever plan on doing a video like this that covers uh, the flow of, of D? I assume that's data. Wait, hold on. Uh, you have uh, you have a great video on the channel the flow of data from start to finish and explaining how and why you do things on the network side. Do you ever plan on doing a video like this that covers the flow of D? D, 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 D. I, I don't know if that got clipped off. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, all right. I was looking. Uh, previous got cut off. You have a great video on channel. Okay. Oh, we're almost getting to the point again. Uh, do you ever plan on doing a video that covers the flow of data with Docker, Proxmox, Rancher, et cetera, connecting all the dots from start to finishing? Yeah, yeah, in a home lab in a modern era. Yeah, I, I do. 
I do. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, um, it's VLANs. <laughs> spoiler alert, it's VLANs, for sure. It's, uh, and I, I talked about it in there, but I didn't like double click. I didn't like dive in uh, to how it should be set up. Uh, but I do, I, I, it's been in my backlog like forever and uh, I just need to get to it. And uh, it keeps coming to the top, but then something else keeps coming up. Anyways, uh, absolutely, I, I, how many times am I gonna say I do? I do have something coming. It's definitely in the backlog. It's like at the number two or three spot right now. Um, that stack could always get pushed down or popped, uh, but the answer is, is, is gonna be VLAN. So it's gonna be like separating out, it's gonna be logically separating out what you, what the roles are of these containers or these pods in, in, in Kubernetes or these servers, and then logically grouping them on a VLAN or a, on a network, and then creating firewall rules to say, hey, you know what? And, and be explicit about it and say, this group does not talk to this group or this group, except for this one machine can talk to one machine in this group on this port. So it's really, it's really just tightening things up. And so, you know, I, th I think going VLANs is, is the first step and then saying block all. Uh, the second step is maybe saying like, hey, IP to IP. But if you really want to tighten it up, then you say port to port too as well. So it's, it's a combination of uh, IP and port and VLAN when you start creating your rules. But anyways, I mean, that's how I have mine. That's, that, that was my plan at some point to kind of walk through my network, like real world scenario. Like, hey, I do host stuff publicly in my house, out of my house, in my K3S cluster. And I do have stuff that I don't want public that I host internally in my home. And how does that all work? So I, yeah, absolutely I do. I just, uh, time. <laughs> I'd love to do it. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to at some point just have more time to do all this, but uh, I need to get to it. So anyways, that's a, that's a really long winded uh, way of saying VLANs, firewall rules, check your firewall rules too, uh, you know? Um, yeah, I absolutely. I will. All right. All right. You guys, I'm, I'm, I, I don't mean to like, uh, babble. All right. Uh, here we go. W one last, one last one. Cause I just saw it here pop in. Uh, do you, have you looked into cloud Vera, Cloudflare zero trust and using tunnels to access your externally facing services instead of port forwarding to your reverse proxy. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Um, I have absolutely. I have. So, so, so two, two parts to this. Um, so there's zero trust and then there's tunnels. Those are different things. Um, those th definitely different things, you know, obviously tunnels is, is, is a way for you to exp expose your traffic or your, your, your services directly through Cloudflare's reverse proxy. And then zero trust is a huge buzzword, but basically at the end of the day is saying, I trust no one. I trust no one. I, I, there is no perimeter. There is no, you know, gated wall to my network. Everybody needs authentication and everybody has to be authenticated in order to communicate with my services. At the end of the day, that's, that's kind of, kind of what it is, or at least how I understand it. You know, and, and you could say, well, VPN circumvents a lot of that. It does. It does. If, if you don't have authentication on something and you're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't need it. Cause I'll VPN in. Well, I mean, that's, that's what, that's what zero trust I think is, is, is trying, trying to solve. It's trying to say, don't trust anyone. It doesn't mean if you're on, you know, here at home, I have stuff on my trusted network. It doesn't mean I turn authentication off. Heck no. <laughs> Heck no, I keep that on. So anyways, long story short, so what Cloudflare then does is say, hey, they have two solutions. One, no more port forwarding, expose it through a tunnel to their reverse proxy. And then on top of that, slap authentication in front of that. So your question is, have I done it? Yes, I've done it. I played with it. Um, one, I am actually doing, yes, I, I am doing zero trust with Cloudflare and it's it's pretty awesome. I, I have some publicly exposed endpoints that have authentication built into them, WordPress. I mean, if you go to my blog, you know, it, it, I can't easily hide how you log into there. I can obfuscate it and make it, you know, security through obscurity, but I, I, it doesn't make any sense to do that. So what I ended up with doing was just applying you know, and I'll probably have a video on this at some point. I, I ended up applying, because I just did it, uh, zero trust policies to a part of that path to say, hey, you know what? My blog, 100% wide open public, but you know what? This path of the URL for a logging in is gonna require authentication from Cloudflare. On top of the authentication and two-factor auth that I already have. So 
It's it's kind of a double off thing, but I don't care. Because then it's saying like, hey, Cloudflare is going to handle this piece. And even if someone got through to that, then they still have to authenticate the way I want them to. And then they'll have to get through to that. So it's kind of belt and suspenders. Anyways, long story short, <laughs> long story short. Um, so have I done it? Uh, yes, I have. So I've done the, I, I've done them both. I, I'm still doing the zero trust piece through Cloudflare. It's, it's actually really cool. I can, you know, I can set it up on some of my domains, either per subdomain or per path in the URL. Super fun, super fun to do, super cool to see it work. And you're like, oh, this is great. Um, as far as tunnels go, um, uh, you know, I'm torn. I'm torn with tunnels. <laughs> I'm torn with tunnels. I like it. I'm torn with tunnels because I have a reverse proxy and I have things in place and I have, I have uh, firewall rules and I have uh, deep packet inspection and I have a lot of security built into my reverse proxy. And then on top of that, I still use Cloudflare to force everyone through their reverse proxy down to my reverse proxy before they can even get to my stuff. And, um, you know, I, I kind of have a I don't know if I'm being old school or what it is, or I'm being like, I, I feel like I have to have ownership of stuff, but for me, I'm, I'm not comfortable. I feel and this isn't, this is how I see it. I'm not feel, I'm not comfortable like creating like this back door on one of my machines for something to just come in. And I, I get it that Cloudflare, you're still going to go through their reverse proxy. They're going to, you know, vet everything that comes through. And as long as it's safe, they're going to send it down. But then like, I kind of, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. And maybe I built up my infrastructure and my architecture a certain way. And I'm like, nope, this is how I'm going to do it. And so, I, so honestly, I, I don't have a need for tunnels because I have stuff in place to do it. I have a reverse proxy. I issue my own certificates. I still do do a double reverse proxy because I want the protection from Cloudflare. Um, but then I don't use tunnels because I have the infrastructure in place. If I didn't have the infrastructure in place, yeah, I, I, I'd probably use it. But at the same time, I would probably lock down things a little bit more um i know at the end of the day they're going to be sending you know stuff on port 443 or whatever port and it's going to go or 80 or whatever you want to do to that machine you know but at the end of the day like for me it's like no cloudflare sends it to my reverse proxy and it's going to block anything that comes through that one didn't come from cloudflare and two doesn't match any port or host header or certificates and all of this other stuff so I kind of feel like I feel like at least for me, like I'm 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 gonna keep it that way because I have a little bit more control over what comes in. And I don't know, may, maybe I'm making it all up. Like, don't get me wrong. I, if I was behind CGNAT or something like that, hundred percent, I'd be all in. <laughs> you know, or if I didn't if I didn't want to build a reverse proxy and host all that stuff, and I just had one machine, and yeah, I'd be all in. I'd be all in there too. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I have, I have the capability to do it myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm babbling now. But um, so for a lot of those reasons, I haven't really, you know, organized my thoughts on that. I'm not using tunnels. Would I use them again if I was behind CGNet? Yeah, hundred percent. You better believe it, because that's one of the few ways I'm going to get it done. Um, and if I had a single machine and and or I was shared internet access with someone who wouldn't give me port forwarding, yeah, I'd do it absolutely. But I kind of look at it like. That's the way I would do it if I couldn't do it my way first. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm being stuck in my ways. I don't know. I don't know. But that's kind of how I feel. And and don't get me wrong. It's it's, it's not a bad solution. It's just like I, ha I have a solution and I have an architecture and I have a pattern for doing what I'm doing. Does it mean it's the best? No. As you guys see sometimes, it doesn't always mean that. Uh, but it does mean that I, I, I have put a lot of thought and time into, into that. And I, I don't want to bypass a lot of the security and stuff that I have in place. Again, I'm still using Cloudflare as their, from their reverse proxy, but then it has to go through my stuff too. It's like double gauntlet. <laughs> double gauntlet. And I, I'm okay with that. The more gauntlets, the merrier when it comes to public internet stuff coming in. So, but yeah, I, I, it's a great solution. Again, it's uh, nothing against it. I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's it's secure and it it's 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 as good as uh, everyone says it is for sure. And I, I tested it out. I tested out there uh, tunnels and tail scale. I, I I did a lot because I was I was trying to find a way to do something similar in the past. But anyways, uh, yeah. So, I, but I I'd love to hear your uh, your experience with it. Uh, I'm I know it's magical. I know it's awesome. I I, I know it's secure. Uh, I just again have have stuff in place. <laughs> You're like, how many times can he like try to defend his decision? 
politely. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need some sleep. Anyways, hey, uh, I, I, speaking of sleep, I'm not going to sleep because I don't take naps, but I do need to put on my glasses. Um, hey, I, I uh, thank you guys so much for, for joining in today. I really appreciate you being here and, and joining in and this conversation. And thanks for helping me sway my opinion on uh, both naps and Cloudflare uh, tunnels. I, I appreciate it. And I always, I, I welcome, <laughs> I welcome differences of opinion because it forces me to understand why I think a certain way. So I appreciate it. I absolutely love it. I love it. If everyone thought the same way as I did, this be a weird world. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. There was there was uh, lots of follows. There was lots of subs. There was gifted subs. There was renewed subs. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, I really, really do. Um, if you want to continue this conversation, there's a lot of people in Discord. I know I mentioned Discord a few more times, but I'm going to plug it one more time. We have a community full, over 8,000 people of people who are, or who are kind, who are you know, patient, who are knowledgeable, who are helpful, and who love uh, technology. And I would love it if you would join. Um, you can do that down below. There's links for Discord or it's discord.gg slash technotim or just go to technotim.live and click on stuff or exclamation point Discord or just Google it because I think even the public Google one that got crawled by their bots is the way to get in. So anyways, uh, thank you so much. I, uh, I, I'll probably be on Discord a little bit later and uh, I will be back uh, next Saturday and hopefully I'll have something out a little bit sooner than this last video because i i need i need a quick win after that one so anyways and i and i a uh, couple of people have mentioned this in 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 the youtube video comments and i'm so glad they did and i'm so glad they listened to that part uh but i promised that i would have documentation like basically the ultimate guide to wake on land because i learned so much about wake on land this past two weeks and solved all these mysteries that i i i always wondered like why doesn't it work when i shut down but it works if I pull the power and plug it back in on a clean, cold start. It works then. Same with Linux, Windows too. I learned a ton. And what does this option mean in the BIOS? Like that seems like Wake on Land should work, but it won't. So I learned a ton of that. I'm writing this article now. I hope to have it out today. And if you want to see that, I'll, 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 I'm going to post it either on Twitter. I'll post it on Twitter and Discord, both places, because uh, uh, I learned a ton and I need to get it out of my head. And I did promise it in that video and people are already asking. So I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. People hold me accountable, <laughs> so I appreciate it. Anyways, hey, have a great rest of the day. Have a great weekend, and take care. Be good to each other.